Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Andrew and welcome back to another Clip Studio Paint tutorial video. So for this tutorial video, I had somebody in the comments ask me how they can put a 3D object into a 2D picture and make it look like it fits in the perspective of the 2D picture. Now this is very difficult um, because it all, a lot of it depends on which particular picture you have and what type of information you can get from a picture. Uh, if you choose something like a country road where it has a lot of hills, uh, it's going to be very difficult because when you create a perspective ruler, uh, it usually points to one vanishing point and so your floor or your, um, yeah, the floor, the wherever your character is going to uh, step on is going to be flat and even and that's just not what the real world is so for this particular uh, example uh, this is how I would put a 3d object into this 2d picture so first of all uh, I'm going to lower the opacity of the picture just so it's not overwhelming but when you add so I'm going to add a 3d character I'll just add this one here. So when you add a 3D character, it automatically um, has a perspective ruler. It's turned off by default. So this little square over here next to where it has a red X, if you click it, you can then see you have your perspective uh, tools. Uh, I created uh, a video on how you can use perspective rulers in Clip Studio Paint. I'll leave a link in the description for that video in the comment section. Uh, so what I'm going to do, see, uh, the the information that I can grab from this photo is um, I can use, I'm going to use the floor. See how the floor has these uh, square tiles? I'm going to use that. And for me, I found it that it works best if you uh, map the perspective ruler to something on the floor because uh, there are certain things like the maybe the bookshelves and stuff it will leave it will lead to a perspective point but I'm not sure that that perspective point is the same as the floor it's kind of it's kind of hard to explain but uh, for me I guess anyways it works best if I have uh, if I use the floor as the perspective so the the floor on this uh, library has um, has tiles which makes it really easy so all I have to do is just line up these guidelines here to the tiles again uh, also um, what I'm going to do, if you look over here on the left where it says grid, I'm going to turn off that grid. So I I don't need the, the grids on the floor. It just adds too much information. I need a clear view of what I'm doing. So, like I said, I'm just going to line up these guidelines here with uh, any of these uh, lines of the tiles to make sure that perspective is correct. Now I also have uh, these, uh, so this gives me a three-point perspective. By default, it gives me uh, a three-point perspective. I'm going to match these here. Let me see if that's uh, it's close, but not quite right. You can see I'm grabbing these blue dots and it that allows me to tilt tilt the line uh, so that when I tilt the again I, you can refer to the Clip Studio Paint um, perspective tool tutorial that I gave a link will be in the description so we have one perspective point here and then one perspective point way out here. And again, all I'm doing is using the tiles on the floor to uh, create my perspective. Now there's one more perspective. 
uh, by default again when you throw in a 3d model it gives you three point perspective so here's the third point uh, it goes off to infinity but we're going to change that uh, but first let me move my model out of the way because I'm going for that I'm going to use the the shelves on the on the bookshelf here so I'm going to match that one and you can kind of see that I need to tilt oh, this way and that oh, I need to maybe just a little bit more this way here that's about right okay so that's basically it so um I'm going to change the shadow of my uh, 3D model. To to go back to the 3D model, you simply on the uh, 3D model layer. If you click the the raster here, uh, that will take you back to your 3D model, and you have the tools here to rotate and flip. Now, one of the uh, what I would say is do not use these camera. Uh, the first three icons here are for to manipulate the camera. Don't use those because you've already set up your perspective. Uh, the remaining uh, tools, icons here, are to spin and rotate your your 3D model within the perspective you already created. So I'm just going to go over here on the left where it says Applied Light Source. If I open that up, I'm just going to change so that I can see the front of my 3D model. All right. And now, um, as you can see, the 3D model, this last icon here will let me move my 3D model within the uh, 3D space that I've created. But as you can see, he's very tall. In fact, if using the shadow of the 3D model, you can see if I put the shadow right next to the lamp, you can see he's very, very, t or she's very, very tall. So. The only uh, thing I would do for this to correct that would be to, uh, under the 3D model here in the left, if you drop down, just lower the scale, oops, too low, to something that uh, would look like the regular size. I think something like that would be okay. Again, some people are short, some people are tall. So depending on how you want to do it, how big. Usually what I do is I take the the 3D model. I'm putting it over here next to this guy. Because I, I usually what I do is check head size. And so I'm just looking for that her head size is about the, roughly the same as his head size. And to me that looks okay. And so now you can uh, pretty much place your 3D model anywhere you want and it kind of uh, fits the uh, perspective of this uh, 2D picture. Put it over here. And not only that, um, you can uh, make sure you're still uh, selected. Well, now you can turn off the, the perspective ruler. but. Make sure uh, if you're still selected the 3D model layer, now you can uh, put another 3D model in there. Let's do one of the newer ones. Okay. And the only thing you really have to um, change is uh, the, the scale size. So if you go Oh, back here on the left, if you choose your 3D model, you can see that my object scale is at 75. So I will do that to this new 3D model and make it 75. So now they're uh, roughly the same scale. Of course, you can make it shorter if if you if you want to do like a child or something, sm a smaller person. Um, but now you can put him anywhere you want and it's still within the uh, same same perspective of the 2D 
image. Again, uh, doing doing this stuff uh, is very difficult because just simply because uh, trying to find the correct perspective of photograph. Um, not everything lines up perfectly. In fact, uh, like if you look at this table, it's it's going this way the perspective lines but if you were to find that vanishing point out here it that vanishing point would only line up for this table simply because in real life not everything lines up to one perspective point in fact I did a video on this it's called a false point perspective I'll leave a link in the description uh, that explains that uh, so uh, putting a 3D model into a 2D picture is difficult. Uh, I hope that this video at least showed you some pointers, some things to look at. For uh, instance, like I said, uh, I like to look at the floor. If I can find the perspective of the floor, that's always the best. And then, of course, if the floor changes, like if there's a hill or uh, a slope, then your you have to create a, a new perspective point for that uh, because using one perspective point will only give you a flat uh, floor um, and so again uh, also once once you create the perspective you manipulate the scale of your 3d model to uh, fit by this by the way I did it you know I I lined them up against the lamp and I just made sure she she lined up with uh, with the size of the lamp so uh, use use uh, the objects in the in the 3d in the 2d uh, photo as a reference to how how to scale your uh, 3d objects okay so uh, I hope this was helpful I hope this was informative and if you like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'm in Clip Studio Paint tutorial videos like this one. If there is something that I've missed or that uh, you need further explaining, please leave a comment down in the comments section. Or if you want to know how to do anything else in Clip Studio Paint, um, uh, again, leave a comment about that. If I can't find an answer for you, um, I will try to... Uh, at least point you in the right direction to where you can get that. Um, again, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.